everyone. I'm with Jill Roth, the winner of the $25,000 Novice Non-Pro in the 2016 NCHA World Finals. Now, Jill rode Be A Pure Cat. Congratulations to you, Jill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, this was a tight race. Uh, you were tra- trailing by $56, is that right, when you were coming into the $58 coming into the final. Yes. What was your strategy here? Just get through it. I just figured try and get it checked both times and we'll see how it works because either way it was going to be champion or reserve and I'd be happy with either one. Okay, tell us about how the year went. Um, it was you two pretty much leading it the whole way. It sounds like you were breathing down Sherry's neck for most of it. Well, I really didn't decide till about June to go into the 25 novice non-pro. Um, I was trying for the non-pro and then my horse got hurt, strained his back a little so I had to scratch out of a few shows and you miss any in the non-pro and you're done. So I checked the, I just wanted to make top 15. So I checked to see what it would take in the 25, which he was still eligible for and it didn't take a lot. And I just went and showed. My trainer Morgan Cromer said, you gotta go, just keep riding. So I went and hooked up with Tom Diaz and his wagon train And we just went to every show, and my horse just kind of clicked, and we just started getting checks and winning, and and there we were. (laughs) You gained, you made up a bit of room just in the last uh, two weeks before the finals. Tell us about that. Well, we only, you know, I didn't go anywhere but Pacific Coast shows. I never left the West Coast. So um, I just had to hit what we had, which was like Arizona, Arizona shows, and then um, there was one in Bakersfield. And I knew that... uh, my husband was pushing me to go to Batesville, and I said, I do not want to go to Batesville. It's just too far. So we said, let's just take our chance and see what happens. So we just went to any show that was available, and it was about two in the month, you know, and four day, eight days in the last month, and we just hit him, and my horse just won everything. <laughs> he was such a good boy. And take us through your, both go-rounds in the actual world finals. Well, um, the first day I drew up third, and we, uh, we had all our cows picked, and believe it or not, all of them were cut before I showed my, in the third person. So I just went in, and I just know if I can drive up, that horse will take care of the rest. And I had a little boggle on my first cow in the first run, um, which I think they kind of crucified me for a bit. Otherwise, he was just right on, and um, I marked a 218, which I was still thrilled about. Now, this is your second world title. Tell us about your first. First, uh, I actually did travel a lot for. I won the 50,000 Amateur in 2013, and we went all the way from California to Alabama, Mississippi, and back to California. But this one, I didn't have to win as much. The 50 Am, again, it was a close race. It was $110. I was $110 ahead going into the World Finals. Again, I like to keep it, (laughs) everybody on their toes about this, so... uh, just managed to pull it off again in that one. Um, same thing, won the world, won the world finals, and I'm just thrilled to be able to do it again. How does it feel to have your second world title now? I'm, I'm so excited about it, but I really think I'm going to take a break. <laughs> really think I'm going to take a break. So, um, But I'm really happy how it turned out. My horse did just, uh, I just love him. I just love him. He's just honest and big hearted and loves me. He's just a cool dude. <laughs> So it's interesting that um, you can win a world title without having to do all the hauling that you have done previously. So some people who might be put off by the thought of, you know, a whole year to devote to being on the road, um, maybe if they're smart about it and the way they plan it and they're they're successful on the shows they do go to, they can perhaps reduce that time on the road, do you think? I know. I I was very surprised because it doesn't even feel like I hauled, like I say, because we never drove more than 12 hours um, to get to a show, which was Arizona. I did go to Colorado, but that was more for fun, but I just happened to do well there as well. But yeah, surprisingly in that novice non-pro class, like I said, I just wanted to make top 15, but my horse just kept going and doing well and managed to get a little higher than 15. (laughs) So yeah, I mean, it depends on the class. The non-pro, no, you have to go. And that would be my next goal but I'm not going to try for it next year I swear I swear I say that every year I'm never going to do this again but I swear I'm not next year (laughs) but it sounds like it might be might be there down the track I wouldn't mind giving it a shot we'll just see how it goes thanks for joining us for this one